everyone, welcome to the Game Changers YouTube channel. Today we are in Dubai, in the heart of Dubai business, in Jumeirah Lakes Towers. Today we are meeting the founder of 1762. He is one of the best restaurant business owners in Dubai and he is listed number 11 in Dubai SMEs. So let's listen to his story, get some tips about doing business and learn something new. Let's go! So we are inside 1762, so let's meet the owner. Hello everyone, today we are meeting one of the best restaurantees in Dubai and the UAE. He is number 11 in Dubai SME and his name is Manar al -Juyushi. Manar, thank you very much for hosting us here in your beautiful restaurant. We are very happy to be here with you today and we are very keen to listen to your story, how you started, what were your difficulties, your path, what UAE means to you and so on and so forth. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me for this opportunity. Yeah. It's my pleasure. So let's start from the intro questions. When did you decide to come to the UAE? What was your reason to do so? Uh, funny that you mentioned that. This actually came long before I, um, I would say um, in 1986. And there was a book actually I was reading called The Arabs. And it was done by a guy called Peter Mansfeld. And um, he was talking about different um, places in the Arab world. And one of them was describing the United Arab Emirates. And uh, the description of it was the El Dorado State. And the El Dorado is about the richness, is about the creativity. And that was done long, long ago before actually it started. So, uh, uh, so I always looked forward to be part of it. Big family members of mine were here uh, in the early 70s. And um, they were always telling me a lot of beautiful story about being here. So I've always wanted, that the minute I graduate, I want to be in this part of the world. So what was your age when you actually first time experienced the UAE? I came down here when I was, I would say, um, 22 years old. Yeah, 22, 23 years old, yes. Yes, I finished my school, my university, and the minute I finished, I think a week after I got my results, I was in United Arab Emirates. Nice. So the moment you came, what you faced, what, what was Dubai like, what was your uh, UAE like uh, as a country and probably what were your feelings about it? Uh, did, you, did you have some feeling that, well, this will be my country of growth where I will uh, be a successful entrepreneur or you didn't think about it at that time? I have to say, the, the, the minute I landed here, I felt the opportunity. I felt the good vibes, the positive vibes. Um, I really thought this is the right place to be in, yeah. in on many levels. Um, on the other hand, uh, I'm groomed as a, as a family member to be an employee, uh, a good one. Well, well I was, that's what I was hoping at that time. And, uh, you know, to grow through the um, career path within a, a, an organization, a corporate, and retire, you know, as a GM or a director or whatever. Um, so that's, I never really thought that I will have a shift in career. I thought I was going to just go into a normal um, employment career. So that was, that was but, but that was as well was a great opportunity for me even to be in a career because there was a lot of opportunity even within an organizational, on an organizational level. Did your parents ever try business before you? No, not at all. We not are, at all. We are from a middle, well-educated family. Right. So that's hence the employment. It's always about safety. It's always about, you know, you work, you, you work with the same company for many, many, many years. And then, you know, that's how it's, <laughs> how, how it's supposed to be. So can you please tell us a little bit about your parents? Like So uh, actually, I, actually, well, to go back a little bit, yeah. my father was a teacher, was a teacher. teacher. Yeah. And at some stage he had a restaurant in his life, towards the end of his life, he had a restaurant. And it was a very famous restaurant. But wasn't, uh, it, well, it was uh, kind of an adventure that I don't know much about at some stage. But I, was, but I didn't meet him because um, I was five years old when he passed away. So I was raised by my aunties. And my, my auntie is a professor at the University of Damascus. So she was a, 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 you know, a philosopher, a, an educator. So, so that's how we were raised up in that sense. 
So it's all about education. It's all about uh, you know how you want to uh, to grow and how to be in a in a in a perfect you know, consistent employee. Career. Yeah, yeah. Consistent career. Yes. So that's that's kind of like the feedback that I got. This is actually a real bus. This is a real bus that it's can a, go. Yes. This, this bus is actually licensed. It can uh, go to where it's supposed to go. Uh, it's got a kitchen. This is actually a unique unit. Mm -hmm. It's a it's an original uh, Route Master 1966. Yeah. Uh, we've done it to our specs. It's the only one that is in the same config. This configuration is the only one globally. Really? And, yes. Nice. There is a lot of double deckers from the same company that did them, but this is our own design okay. for this Route Master. And uh, uh, and we wanted to bring something as well for to represent Dubai and to present United Arab Emirates with something unique, interesting and new. So this is actually, it's a, it's a continuation of this town is us, of what we aspire to be and what we want to do things yes, I think when you just opened, I was driving this way and was thinking, oh my God, what the bus is doing here? 17682, what is that? Ah, maybe there is a rest. So this is like- The connection. Connection, attraction, so you want you want to know what is that? What is what is inside? So this this one did uh, some really fascinating events, uh, right. beautiful events, because you can see people upstairs, ah. and the kitchen is down. But of course, it's mostly about activation outside of it. It's a it's a theme that you can work right. out. Around. You get into the environment. Exactly. Right? So this is this is what the bus is all about. It's a representation of, you know, what we want to do. Um, all right. The team means everything to business. What does it mean to you personally? And how do you select people when they want to work in 1762? Uh, as I told you earlier, I am a set of experiences and I'm a set of uh, uh, my surroundings. And without uh, the team, I can't do this on my own. That's just for sure. Um, I look for people that are hungry. They, are, uh, they have a high level of ethics. Uh, they have the energy, they have the creativity. Uh, to actually drive the business mm -hmm. um, and I just depend on them because my business is quite big mm -hmm. and it's quite the you know diver, you know uh, spread out throughout the town and throughout right. the country actually and then I can't control everything so I have to really depend on a good team to do that so I look for energy I look for somebody that can do a lot of tasks mm -hmm. because I don't believe in specialization we cannot we are small medium enterprises we cannot have somebody that does only a specific task. So whoever is going to be hiring is going to do everything. Yeah. And uh, and uh, we always take energy, energetic young team that can do a lot of things. They learn a lot. And I pride myself of having people around 25% of my team is more than five years, no, actually more than 10 years in my business. Do you, you do you yourself participate in uh, the process of hiring yes. or? For key positions, yes, I am. I am very much involved. What are the key positions? Uh, the, the catering department, the managers for the shops, because this is the face of the company. So it's very important for me to actually be interactive. The chef, the uh, product development, the people who are behind uh, all the new uh, items that we do, right. the uh, QC, uh, the quality control. So I really need to get because these are each of these are the pillar of my business. If one of them is not right. And we are the strongest as the weakest link in our chain. So we have to be very strong. Who do you think is the second most important person in the company? Is it HR manager or financial manager? Uh, definitely HR, in HR. my opinion, yes. Definitely HR, because they are the one. You see, this is a town where things change quite a lot. And you have people having better opportunity and they have to go after it. So this HR really needs to keep feeding the company with talents and uh, given that opportunity of talent uh, pool. So the HR is very key. The, the financial is, yes, definitely. I don't know if that's it's more important or less important, but uh, for me it's an HR because I depend on people and I hope that my finance just do the math properly. Right, right. Uh, do you recommend for the startups, like for people who just want to start a business uh, or had already went through some way, do you recommend them to hire an HR manager or to outsource it from some HR companies? I, I'm a vertically integrated company. I like to have everything in-house. Um, we never really used uh, anybody from outside except in a few occasions. Um, in this, when we start up, I did all the hiring as an HR manager. Yeah. 
until we were able to afford, we were able to afford to have an HR manager. And uh, during that time, we used companies that you know, uh, recru- uh, 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 what you call it, uh, recruiters, etc., etc., uh, to to give us CVs, and we paid them for that matter. Mm. So I would suggest whenever you have the chance to have something, if you can afford it, yeah. hire it. Yeah. Do it your own. Don't don't go and outsource a lot of things because you don't have the personalization that you want. And I have 255 employees. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot of uh, you know technicalities. There's a processes. There's a lot of things that needs to be followed. And I can't do this on my own. And I cannot outsource it to other people. So it should be in house. So as well, depending on your work, if you are a small little company that you are uh, maybe 10, 15 people, I think you don't need to. And I think as a small medium enterprise company, you can do it your own. But then once becomes more complex and more people are more diverse, you need an HR manager, that's for sure. So the engine is working? Yes. Everything is working? Six. It's a straight six, 1966 model. Nothing has been changed on it. It's all original. Uh, it's a classic piece. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. It's running perfectly like a clockwork. Uh, How did you bring it? Where did you bring it from? So this, is, this is brought in from the UK. From the UK. So, so it was done in the UK. It was, the, it was uh, configured in the UK. Uh, very good partners of ours back in the UK and they've done this to everything so the details inside is unbelievable so yeah so we're very happy with it we're very proud of it uh, and it's uh, most most of the work happens in the winter time so in the summertime uh, this is its home uh, because it's quite hot but uh, yeah. once it, once it's the winter time it's just changing did you drive it yourself <laughs> No, 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 that's too expensive for me to take that risk. <laughs> Do you remember the time when you decided to start your own business and what made you come to this decision? Well, uh, th- this is where it becomes actually quite uh, fascinating because I am what they call the accidental entrepreneur. I was never really, as I said, um, I meant to go on a normal career path, yeah. uh, an employer, uh, you know, I'm working salesman to a sales manager to a director to a group to whatever. And then I, one day I was kind of like, maybe it was God called or whatever, a nudge to say, uh, you have to do something else. So I was, um, I was uh, made redundant when I was on top of my game in my career. Right. So in 2003, in December 2003, I was made redundant. And, uh, and I told my wife at the time, I said, um, you know what, I'm too tired. I've been traveling a lot because my, my job required me that to be on a plane all the time. So I'm just going to take, take my time. I am a very important man. I know a lot of people and I'm going to be employed in no time. Um, one year, uh, 12, 14 months later, I had no job. I was doing interviews, but uh, was never getting one. All right. Until my, my, uh, my close friend and my partner and my friend who I did my studies with, my master's with, he came and said, Manar, you, we have, you have to do something. You cannot stay like that. And I said, well, you know, you can see I'm trying to find a job, but I just, he said, maybe you need to try uh, private work. I said, but I don't know anything about private work. This is not how, you know, I came down here with a thousand dollars in my pocket and uh, look at me, I build up a family, I have a, a, I live in a villa, I have two cars, I have a daughter, I'm married, you know, this is my, this is my life expectations. And he said, maybe you need to change that. So uh, Nabil, my, who is my partner now, yeah. he came and said, no, 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 you have to, you, you, listen, you cannot continue like that. You don't, you're not going to ha- have enough money to last you forever. So, uh, so we were sitting having lunch actually after a, uh, after a squash game. Do you remember the the place? Yes, very much. And actually, I remember exactly where we were. We had a game of squash, and then we met, uh, had lunch in Al Halab restaurant in Garhoud, an Arabic restaurant in Garhoud, and we were talking. And his recommendation was to make an Arabic uh, saj, yeah. you know, and do a few things. I said, no, let's do bagels, which is not something that is in United Arab Emirates. And uh, we didn't know what we were talking about. We had no clue. He he said, let's do a coffee shop. I said, no, let's do a catering company. And he said, yeah, that's a better idea. He said, let's supply gas station. We had no idea. That that conversation is exactly like me and you now talking. And he said, "Uh, Manar, let's let's do something. I said, okay, fine. 
you know. It's, we were just talking nonsense, really, if you want to say it that way. But kind of, uh, he gave me the confidence. He was always the dynamic, uh, you know, uh, outsider. He was always the, the, the backer. So uh, not on a financial, it was on, a, on a, an emotional level, you yeah. know, on a strategic level. It was always there on the side, kind of like, okay, this is going to happen. And, uh, we, you know, we had, he said, how much money we, you have? I said, I don't have a lot. He said, well, whatever you have, I'll match it. We said, okay. So I think we had 280,000 dirhams total money that we had. But so I needed to pay the rent. This is the capital that you started Yes, from. it's 280,000 dirhams. So we built up a kitchen with it. Well, now, do you remember your first time when, about your first restaurant? Like, what was it? Where was it? How did you open it? Well, the, the first one was actually when we decided to move from Appetite, which is the more the catering, the delivery, into 1762. Right. So that was kind of like, what do we want to achieve with that? Mm -hmm. And uh, then the thoughts came in, we got a lot of inspiration, we traveled, we went to Europe, we went to Asia, we looked around, and then we got a lot of inspiration, and then we thought where this could fit. And we looked at business areas. So the first actually location we picked up was in downtown Jabal Ali, yeah. uh, which is in a business area. And we've done the design when we looked at the space. And you know, kind of like when you look at a baby and you know how it's supposed to look like and, you know, the name and uh, what's all of these right. things. So you can actually see it. So this is how it's happened. Yeah, why 1762? Yeah, the name was, uh, uh, was uh, really funny because we wanted to have something that is uh, representative of what we serve. Okay. And we wanted something different. So 1762 is actually the first ever time the word sandwich was written as a sandwich. Ah. So it's the year 1762. It was written in right. a newspaper that people went out on a picnic and they had cheese. I like sandwiches. when there is a story behind yes. the name of so this is So it's the year of the sandwich and it's the first year of the sandwich. How many staff did you hire? We had two actually. Two people. And one of them is... He's doing the croissant down here. All right. Um, that was that was 14 years ago. Um, so, uh, so we, so we said, you know, based on the initial calculation, which you always do, like you know, your Excel sheet looks fantastic. You're going to become a millionaire in six months, but not really. People know uh, the reality of it. But I think if you don't know sometimes the realities and you jump into something. This is the way you jump. If you know the reality, you may not jump. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so I think we didn't know a lot. So we thought it was going to be fantastic. It turned out to be great. Uh, but the process was not easy, if I want to put it this way. Uh, the process as in the obstacle, the challenges, especially if you don't know the industry. Yeah. So I'm a chemist. I have a master's in business administration. My friend and partner is a financer, banker. Uh, uh, you know, he's uh, with noth nothing to do with food. We love food, yeah. like everybody else, like a lot of people, but we don't know anything. So, um, uh, so we, when we opened, and I said, like, I don't have a lot of money and I need to pay my rent. He said, you need to sort out your rent. So I took money from my sister and I paid the rent and we opened, we, you know, we built up the shop, which exceeded the budget by double, as they should. And then uh, we opened and we had only money that lasts us for one week. Uh, but we landed on a good contract. And I think what happened during that process, uh, Maxine, is that the network that we were in was fantastic. And I think right. this is one of the, the greatest experiences I've had in my life, is the network, the, me reaching out to people and people reaching out to me. The people that helped me, are, uh, are fundamental part of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm still having those people around me. Um, those people who give me an information, a tip, uh, a support, uh, on any emotional or, uh, or technical or whatever, uh, really helped me be where I am today. And I, for those people, so, you know, you're always in debt. Um, so without the, these, these network of people, I would have never made it down here. And it was never about money. It was all about support, kind of like a, uh, you feel you're supported, you know, that support. So, um, so we started the business. Um, one of my friends said, why don't we try this place? So we got into this place. We did the sampling from 
from our house to we we gave it to one of our of one of the um, petrol gas stations uh, chains. They approved us. They said you're too expensive, but let's try, and we did, and it was a fantastic launch. Uh, we had we rented one car, a chilled van, uh, because we could not afford to buy a chilled van, and uh, yeah, and then we we started. And that's it, you know, two guys, one driver. Who is your inner, or like, what people are your inner circle? Like the first point of contact in your business, who you trust, who you maybe discuss your business related matters with. Like, who are these people? What positions do they hold? Susie, my partner. Uh, Nabil, my partner. Um, my head of accounts, my HR, my, uh, my head chef, my head of product development and special projects. Uh, a lot of the managers, I, they know a lot the business. It's a, it's a very personal business, right. you know. We all of us want it to happen. All of us have our name there on it, uh, so we carry the badge. So yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have anything. And, you know, it's like whenever there's something, we gather everybody, we talk. How do we deal with this? And people start to give opinions, and then we make decisions accordingly. So. But yeah, if you want to say that somebody that actually I talk always to, it would be um, my partner. Right. Uh, how did you manage to win the 11th place in Dubai semis? Uh, that, was, that was actually a, a, a very exciting time for us. Yeah. Because the first time we, we achieved, uh, the, in 2011, uh, we, we got the 78th position. Then we got, I think, the 62nd position. And then, and I looked at what was missing us, and I understood what's really missing as a small medium enterprise to go through. Um, we aligned those things: um, HR focus, and that's a key part because you are from your HR. Yeah. Then you have we did corporate governance, and then the the Department of Economic Development, who was responsible for the SME programs. They saw people are making an effort. So right. you, are, you are actually progressing as a small company to become a medium enterprise. So this is your shift. Right. And uh, they say that you are taking the right, the right post. And I looked, I wanted to be. I didn't get in the top 10. 11 is good, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it's a big jump from 60 to Absolutely. 11. It's a yeah. big, very big jump. Yeah, so we're very proud of this. We're very proud. But as I, again, it's not me. It's just the way that the team worked it out and uh, we made it happen. Amazing. What would you recommend to invest into those who have 20, 50 or $100,000 right now? There's a lot of areas to look at. I would say technology in terms of platform, uh, application platform, the future. That is the future. Yeah. I would say uh, that's where you really need to look into. Um, if you have a unique idea, that you can present. If you see that this is something in the future, invest in it. Don't invest in today. So don't go and do something that everybody does. Yeah. Do something that is going to happen tomorrow. And that's where your investment. That's where you're taking the risk. Um, there is, you know, and with the higher the risk, the higher the returns. Yeah. So you don't look at what's happening today. Just look. Okay. So what's the market is shifting to? Where is where is the technology going to take us? What people will want? Uh, from the technology to bring them. Uh, whether it's a delivery platform or it's a, it's a space age technology, whatever that is, I think you really need to invest into that. I think this is where the future is. Nice. There are people who are watching you with me today around the globe. In case they want to open a franchise in their home country, I don't know where they are. Uh, can they come to you to email you to ask yes. you yes. about that? It is, it is possible. It is very, uh, very much possible. Uh, this is an expandable. I think one of the one of the most complicated part of trying to establish something like this yes. is to be able to have something that is um, scalable. So this is a scalable concept, and and I think this is where we're trying to be uh, flexible. So that's we we have developed the franchise model. We haven't yet gone through it because there's a lot of things for us to test and make sure that they are successful. Uh, markets do change, like, you know, enforce certain changes on you, so you have to adapt to those changes. Or, you know, you cannot take one concept and just plug it there and it's gonna work. Uh, even big uh, chains do have to adapt to a specific market needs. 
So we have to as well be able to adapt to those uh, market needs. We are living in digital era now. Yes. So everything goes digital. But like most of the people, they prefer to have deliveries to their home instead of going to cafe. But in the Middle East, there is a little bit different culture. Like people want together to communicate. It's very hot outside, especially in the summer. So what do you think uh, in terms of your business? People are mostly ordering online or they are coming and they prefer to come to have a seat here to to meet people inside your Look, restaurant? You will, never, you will never replace a lot of things. And one of them is the ability to see other people. Uh, so people will actually make the effort uh, to come out and do things. Maybe in time we'll see a shift. Uh, still my business, I would say 85% um, of my business is generated within the shops. 15%, uh, that's, that's a growing segment, the delivery. Um, I, if you ask me, it's not about anything. We have a delivery platform, we have everything. We, we use all the platforms, all the technological platforms you can think about uh, for deliveries. But I actually want people to come out and just sit down and experience the uh, the coffee and the, the within the space that they are in, right. not not at home yeah, only. Absolutely. Yes, so I think I think it's important. What is more important than money for you? I think the most important thing is um, uh, ethics and values. Um, money is important to make to achieve things, but uh, the values is what you live on and what you. Um, uh, uh, give to your children. Right. So um, I think the values and the ethics are the most important thing for me. Yes. Where do you take your energy from? My team. Mm -hmm. I have uh, I have a very energetic team. So uh, you have 250 people, right? Yes. And uh, uh, my partners, uh, the great great energy for me. Uh, and without them, I would not be able to achieve that. My friends. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that actually uh, give me a lot of energy right. in many aspects. So yeah, I get it from, from many sources. I'm very lucky with that respect. And I think I have a lot of, I have a drive as well that makes me wake up and I need to give. I think it's about that legacy that I want to leave. I don't know what it is, uh, Maxine, but um, yeah, that's that. What do you think about cryptocurrency? Do you have maybe some? Uh, no. I'm afraid I don't have. I think my cryptocurrency is mostly at work. I am reinvested all here. Um, I don't know a lot about the outside world, maybe maybe uh, shamefully. Yeah. Uh, I know a little bit because I have friends of mine who, who are investors and who are working with the cryptocurrencies. Uh, it's the future. Yeah. Uh, we have to admit it. Um, there is a lot of regulation needs to come. It will right. become regulated. We'll, we'll understand about it in time. But this is kind of any new technological um, uh, thing. thing. Yeah. In general, how open are you to these all innovative things like uh, online orders, like uh, online presence, social media? What do you think about it in general? Every day I wake up, I tell my, remind myself that these are the future. And if you don't adopt them, you're just going to be in the past. And uh, uh, we are very progressive with that. Um, I have to admit, we were late comers into all of these yeah. uh, platforms, yeah. whatever you call them, social media deliveries, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, I'm, and I'm a vertical integrated kind of company. I like to do everything myself. Uh, I don't like to outsource things. I don't like to give things to outside. So um, just feels more control of the quality of the things that I deliver to my customers. Um, but uh, uh, you cannot ignore them. You cannot live without them. That's for sure. And, uh, and they are the future. So and the way to grow is to actually adopt them. Now, during this process, you have to filter. Yeah. Because there's a really good ones and there's really bad ones. Yeah. And you just really need to make sure which platform serves your best, uh, the business best. Keep it maybe just uh, eliminate the others because or else you are just going to be working with too many things and uh, uh, and then you just your efforts will be diluted so we're trying to be selective of what we are taking what is your favorite sandwich out of here uh, <laughs> well there's quite a few actually yeah. um, 
I love the jalapeno chicken wrap. I like the uh, um, uh, the roast beef Yorkshire pudding wrap. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm actually, I'm turning, like in time, I'm turning as well into vegetarian. Right. I like more vegetarian items. And okay, if I'm a tourist who came here and uh, your signature sandwich will be? Uh, I would say Yorkshire pudding wrap will right. be a signature one, definitely. Yep. This one? Yes. And then I would say uh, the jalapeno chicken wrap. Okay. This is a very famous one. Um, Prawn. Yes, this is uh, <laughs> this is poached prawn. Uh, like uh, you know, the, you have a lot of things that you can look at. I have a lot of favorites, and then we always develop a new sandwiches. So you always have new items that is coming through. Then you have the dessert line. Yeah. So which which we all do in house. So. I saw that you have uh, USDA certified certified organic products. Do you use it? Uh, you have some organic. Uh, no. What we have no. This is actually is related to uh, some of the new. We, since the day one we started, we were uh, um, eco-friendly okay. because we believe that is our responsibility. Right. So we always used uh, biodegradable uh, packaging mm -hmm. or compostable. Okay. So we try. This is not an easy task and it's right. never a cheap task. But since day one we started, and Susie was in particular, uh, my partner, she was very adamant that we have uh, a company that is uh, eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we still long way to go. Uh, right. uh, versus other advanced countries, but I think United Arab Emirates in that particular is, a, is way much more ahead of a lot of other countries in the region. So what we have is this is, this is all these food containers that they are PLA, they are food approved, they are FDA, so they are they're good, they're environmentally friendly. Now we've just launched the um, uh, plastic free straws, so we stopped all the plastic. So we can say that your business is like responsible business. We are, we, we aspire to, again, if, we, if I ever told you we are yes. an, an eco-friendly or a responsible 100%, I will be, I will be. Yeah. we aspire to be, we always work towards that. There's still a lot to fix, uh, but we are way ahead uh, in the right direction. Slower than I want, but or what we want, but we are getting there. How many times did you have a feeling that enough? I don't, I don't want it anymore, I want to quit. Maybe I, I, I need to think about other business, other niche. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. You always, you always go on a self-critique and a self-assessment. And, you know, and where are you? You see, one of the things that uh, there is an equation of happiness. Uh, and unfortunately for people like me, I'm not, never a happy man uh, because it's about satisfaction. So it's about your expectations, uh, or you, you know, happiness is e equals uh, your current position or your current achievement minus your ambition. Right. So um, let me just say, uh, let me give you an example. At this age in my life, I want to be, uh, I want to have my brands uh, regionally. That's my ambition. Right. But my current reality, I'm still local. So local minus uh, regional is negative. So I'm not happy. I always assess and reassess myself uh, from time to time. Uh, it's not that I have enough, no. I, but I know that I have more to give. It's just when and how I can achieve that is where my, the frustration is. But uh, to quit this, no, I would never want to quit this. This is, this is my baby. This is our baby, uh, me and my partners, this is our baby. Uh, we made it. We we uh, we fought very hard for it. We fought with each other. We fought very hard for it. We uh, we won a lot. We lost a lot in the process. So this is our um, our little baby, and we want to see it grow uh, not for us only for our children after them. That's maybe the legacy we want to leave. So do you want to develop your restaurants into a family business so that you could give it to your maybe kids? It is already a very much, uh, yes, there, is, there are maybe not blood uh, people that are partners with me, but they are my family and I'm their family. So we want to keep it within. We, we may be looking into investors to actually help us grow because, because we can grow, uh, uh, you know, uh, from within, but that's have a limitation. Um, but we want to keep part of it for us to actually keep that kind of uh, link to it and maybe see it growing on a much bigger scale. So that is maybe for us the future that we want to adopt. But yes, 
I would like to see my kids, uh, if one day wants to come and work in this kind of field, that they have the opportunity to do so. Uh, there is a saying uh, like, a good soldier always wants to become a general. Do you believe that a good businessman should also be willing to become a billionaire? Um, I think it's not about, it's not about uh, you know, accumulation of value money. It's a it's accumulation again. It's about legacy. What had, what did you leave behind you? What are the sets of values you left behind? It's nice to leave a few billions, yes. um, and that's what we always aspire to do. You know what I mean? Money will be a, a byproduct. Um, there is one 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 guy that I really love that I, and a company that I work with uh, during my uh, my early years here. Um, his name is George Merck. And George Merck is one of the founders of Merck Sharp and Dome. It's a pharmaceutical company and it used to be at the time and I think it's still one of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies worldwide. And he always said to his investors, uh, money will come later because they were doing a lot of research and development. Uh, now what we have to do is we have to be patient. We have to serve our company. We have to serve our product. So. Uh, I just want to be better than anybody else. I want to be able to deliver a better product than anybody else. I want to give the customers a better experience. And I do believe that money will come. And then hopefully it will be the billions. Yeah. So, uh, um, but as a philosophy, I think it's not about the dollar value. It's about what you want to give better to your customers, to your people. And I'm sure that will pay back in time. What is your favorite food and cuisine? Maybe here, maybe outside in general. In that's, life. that's an ev evolving affair. Um, that is an evolving affair. You ask me, uh, in time, I, uh, um, you know, crave my mom's food, uh, which we all of us do at times. Um, I, of course, I have a Western taste, so I love a lot of the Western food that we develop ourselves. I like uh, very much, I am a very much, I can try everything. I like intense food, so I am very much a fan of uh, India subcontinent food. Um, and I like the different cuisine that that brings in. Um, so I am very open to a lot of food and I'm very lucky for that. When was the last time you rode a metro? That wasn't actually a long time ago. I was there maybe three months ago. I needed to go to, uh, uh, to the exhibition center and it was, nightmare to reach there so i had to i took the metro because it's the best the most convenient way to get so do you do you go to exhibitions uh, yes. Yes. Uh, what, what is the reason for that uh, this is the way this is a window of the world mm -hmm. if you don't do to exhibitions right. uh, it's kind of like you travel in the world but not really having to travel the world mm -hmm. and uh, one of the greatest experiences we have we have a lot of um, within the industry within the hospitality industry there's uh, quite a few exhibitions and we've learned a lot from them. And actually, a big chunk, I would say, 20-30% uh, of my exposure to the outside world were always, always, always achieved by visiting those exhibitions. So I really strongly recommend people, whatever industry you're going to go for, look at what exhibitions are related to your industry and attend them regularly. Can we say that you can find suppliers for your food there? You know what? It's inspiration. It's mostly inspiration. You get inspired a lot. You have no idea when you are in these places because you see there's always somebody that did something that you haven't seen a process a technique a technology uh, all of these things uh, even even digital technology that it supports um, uh, food and beverage industries you always see the newest the latest what you know and you have to always be open to these things because you see these business any business i believe some very few businesses are what I uh, describe as a glider. Very few. Like maybe, I don't know what they are, in, in, you know, scientists that invent something. It's a glider. It's a, you don't need a, you just need wind to keep flying. But those businesses, they always need an engine to keep flying. Because if you stop the engines, they don't crash, but they just slowly go down. So, so you always need a new thought, a new methodology, new things that comes in. And if you don't go and adopt and look at what's new, if you think you're, you're good, you're in trouble. Right. You aspire to be good. That is the best you can do. Right. And maybe good is not good enough. 
You need to be the best. So, and if you don't adopt new technologies, you're, uh, or look what's new, you're out of the uh, market very soon. How many days a year you are spending off your office, business, and going on vacation? Do you want the truth or do you want truth, the, the truth? truth? Yeah. I don't think I ever switch off. I have my mobile, and this is one of the worst curse of humanity's worst curse, worst, uh, you know, the best thing that ever happened to humanity, that because we are better connected. But uh, I, I think I check my, my emails every 15 minutes. I check my social media every 25 minutes. And I don't think I ever stop doing that. Unless if I am with people, I try to keep my phone on the side. But, you know, the minute it's over, I just check out what's going on around me. So I don't actually switch off. I can't. I wish I can, but I can't. I'm better. I'm way much better now. Uh, than I was uh, maybe three years ago or five years ago. But uh, still, I am very much in the business all the time. But in general, uh, do you all the time spend in the UAE? Or no, 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 I travel. No, no, I make, I make an effort how, to travel. How many times per year? I try to travel once a quarter, once a quarter, and this uh, very short uh, trips. So I can't, I can't go for long trips. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the maximum I can go for maybe 50, 17, 18 days non-stop. But I'm always connected. So I'm, first thing I wake up, I do, I open my laptop, I check out what's my day, and then I go about my day. Um, I'm always connected. But, um, but yeah, every quarter I have to leave the country once to actually see what's going on and get inspiration. How many hours do you sleep now and you slept when you started? No, when I started, I maybe was maybe five hours, uh, even less. And I can't tell you how many nights I had sleepless nights. Um, now I'm much better. Uh, we're now we're much better. Seven, yeah. eight? Um, yeah, I would say seven. 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 Yeah, seven. Can you please tell me a little bit about the design of the place? Uh, why, it's, why you designed it like that? Who was doing the design? So, so this is actually it's a combination of different places that I personally love. Mm -hmm. And I went and I've been and I sat down with. You see, we are not trying to prove anything. We are trying to let people sit down down here and do a work at ease. And uh, the material always gives you that ease. Mm -hmm. So we're not in the future. We're not uh, what you call it a crisp, clean, uh, uh, futuristic. We're yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are an easy space that you sit down, you feel home, comfortable, comfortable. Yeah. Uh, you do your work, you interact, you talk to people, the music should be right, the light should be right. And this is, it should be clean, should be neat, should be tidy. And this is what's the methodology and the thoughts right. behind the space. Um, I love wood. Mm -hmm. uh, Susie loves wood. Uh, so we put a lot of the wood. Yeah. We like copper. This is our home. Mm -hmm. So this is how we, we have things at home. And this is how we like them to be. Uh, so it's actually reflective of who we are and what right. we feel comfortable with. So you like nature, if you love Yes, you love. yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you please tell me a little bit about uh, this place? What so, is it? So this is actually, uh, this is our approach to actually add in some new items. These are reclaimed items. So again, these are very environmentally uh, friendly uh, uh, units. These are designer and unique items. Right. And uh, they are designed in Denmark, but produced in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to introduce a few little items here and there that are actually uh, you know, for home, some people. It's part of the concept, it's part of the organic feel of the space. Uh, is it just a, like a setting or is it for sale? Or? It's for sale, yes, for yeah, sale. yeah, yeah. People can pick it up and um, take nice. it home, so yeah. Nice. So, that's, so this, is, this is the whole concept behind it. It's simple, it's nothing trying to be too much, it's just you pick up, you like something, you take it. Right. Do you exercise? Do you do any sports? How do you spend your free time? I have one of the, my hobbies is horse riding. Horse riding. And uh, this is my Zen time. This is when I connect to nature, to, to a beautiful animal um, that I absolutely adore. And I kind of like just, uh, I try to adopt some other sports. I'm progressive within sports, but I need the sports that is engaging, that is um, challenging mentally. Um, so yeah, but horse riding is my uh, my 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 favorite sport. Yes. Do you watch YouTube videos? What channels? I'm music fanatic, so yeah. I love my music. So I watch a lot of music. Uh, what music do you like? Um, 
anything and everything. You have no idea how you know how wide spectrum uh, of music I listen to. Um, I so I like blues. I like uh, soul. I like uh, funk. Ah, all right. Yeah. So yeah, anything. You know, even now I'm into flamenco because I'm watching some programs and. I see that connection, so I am very progressive within music. What is the most expensive thing that you bought for yourself? Mostly kitchen equipment. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you are look, when you are trying to build up your your business, um, yeah. you usually have no money to buy anything expensive, and uh, most of the stuff that you spend is you spend it on your uh, business. And I think this is the way we were for the past. It's kind of like a philosophy. So whenever we have money, we always put it into making our business more advanced, more, you know, today, maybe more tomorrow. So we always, we always have the money there. One day, maybe I'll be having enough billions to actually buy what I want. But at this point in time, it's mostly focused on my business. What do you read daily? Um, I'm always, I am, I am, I'm afraid I'm not a great reader, um, but I like to read headlines, and I can make a lot of, uh, I interpret a lot of things, I have a sensitivity to what's happening from headlines. So I read a lot on the news, uh, headlines on the news, if something catch my attention, uh, I read it, I spend time. Is it online or you buy? I, online, online, online. Most of my reading is online, uh, because I don't have the time to actually just what is the website you are going to? Um, mostly news. Google? Uh, I go Google, but mostly is the news. I go CNN, BBC, uh, Al Arabiya, the you know Gulf News. I just read all of these and look at everything that's happening around me, and then I can make an assessment of what's happening globally because I'm very sensitive to what's happening globally. If you just started now, what would you do? Restaurant, service. I don't know. I, I would always like to be in the service industry, whatever that is. I would, as I said, I maybe would have fastened things. And I know that they were more, uh, more successful than other things that we tried through the process of the past 14 years. So it would be a restaurant? It could be a restaurant, yeah. It could be a restaurant and maybe a different type of restaurants as well. Uh, more on the luxury restaurants, maybe more towards the Michelin star restaurants. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of those. I, I love food, I love to service on people, I like to engage with people. I love people. Right. And I think that is, that is one of the things that actually made me be in this part of the business. And I think, uh, yeah, I would do that. Maybe, as I said, I will do things in a different way, maybe. I would, maybe that will save me five, six years. And that's why maybe you should start a little bit earlier. <laughs> so you're not, you know, you can enjoy it when you are a little bit younger. Yeah. What can you recommend to those who want to become successful restaurants here like you or successful entrepreneurs? Be consistent. I think this is the most important thing. Be consistent. Um, care for your customers, whatever they are. Um, because if you don't, they're not going to care about you. And then you're going to be outside the business. Be consistent in your message, in your strategy, care. These are the most, the biggest three uh, things that you really need to, to focus on. Because if you don't, you're out. And if I want to say something, and this is very personal, if you think you're good, you're out of the game. When you say, listen to your clients, it's very easy to listen to happy clients. No, no, I think you need to listen to, to complaining clients. So, this is my question. Uh, how do you manage bad client, complaining client, uh, the client who is disappointed, who doesn't like something? What do you do? How do you manage them? There is no bad clients. There is a bad experiences that are provided by me. And it's, you see, it's, it's, it's always in, in expectations. So if you don't meet your, your, you know, the client expectations, you are gonna have an unsatisfied client. And I always look at it in a very simple way. There's always these arguments. Yeah, it's his taste, it's their taste, it's, uh, it's not the same expectations. I say, no, customers need to have um, their own opinion. And what we have to do is we have to look inside first and analyze that. And you can ask anybody on the team, it's always a philosophy. 
we always look inwards and see where did we fail in achieving that satisfaction. Unfortunately, we cannot satisfy 100%, but, uh, but we always look inwards first. We never go and say, no, this is, I don't allow that in the operation. We always say, how can we improve that experience? And that's how we work. We don't work any other way in the company. Um, I can't tell you the amount of time we were able to, confer, to convert a complaint into a business opportunity. Complaints are an opportunity to improve yourself, to impress somebody, that actually they adopt you, because this is the future. If you, as well, one of the things, today we are competing, all of us, uh, in the past 10 years, people are competing on a nicer decoration, or, but then the, the shift went into food. So now everybody's competing in a better food. In the coming few years, the competition is all about better service. So we need to look again. You have to look in the future. You cannot look today. So now today you have to prepare yourself. So whenever it's a service issue, you have to look inward. Say, okay, what was wrong with that experience? How can I improve it? If I'm going to say, no, my experience, my, my service was fantastic. Again, as I told you, you're out. You're going to be out of the business very soon. If you look at yourself as saying, we can only accept the best and we're only aspiring for the best and that's always what we are going to go ahead to achieve, then it's the only way that you can go forward. Right. Because for many, especially young entrepreneurs, when there is some like unexpected thing happening, they say they don't want to blame themselves. They want to say, ah, it's a bad client. No, no, no. It's, not, it's not my company who is doing some, uh, who is not meeting the expectations. It's the client who... So they want to say, oh, I, I, I want to turn this client down. So, no, no, yeah. no, you cannot, you cannot. Um, look, I, this is I promise you, and I don't need to read books, and I am not the most sophisticated entrepreneur. I'm, yeah. As I said, I'm an accidental entrepreneur. Uh, if you ever say that you are good, or you're there, yes. you're definitely not there. So you're, 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 to achieve that customer uh, in relation, you have to listen. You have to open your heart. You have to open your ears and you need to listen. You might not be able to achieve what they want. And that's a failure that you have to take as part of your journey. journey. Business journey yeah. And it's a failure that has happened from your side that you were not able to, to achieve the, these, you know, uh, what the customers want. Uh, but it's never the customer's mistake or it's a bad guy. How to become a business partner of Manar? I want somebody with an energy. Uh, somebody who is uh, who wants tomorrow, not today. Who's hungry for uh, for making things better, for making things unique, uh, interesting. Um, somebody who's creative. Somebody who's uh, pushing me yeah. to be better. Susie, my partner, uh, she always made me a better man. That's I can tell you. She always very critique of because she had an eye for details. And she always, so I need somebody to push me. Nabil is always pushing me to go uh, aggressive. Martez always told me, this is the new trends. Uh, Omar always told me, these are the processes that, I need people that actually guide me into the different directions in life uh, uh, with an energy. And, um, you know, and that's what I need. That's how you become my partner. What do you like about the UAE? It's actually the ability of being free and be able to do business at way much ease. You have, it's a place where you can actually achieve your dreams if you are focused and you know what you want to do, uh, which is not many places can offer you that. Suppose you met His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, what would you tell him or what would you ask him? Or maybe you met him already. Uh, no, I, I've seen him, I've been so close to him many times. Right. Always wanted to shake his hands, but uh, he's always busy. Um, but I'm sure if he's got the chance to see, he will do, because I, I know how he is, personally. Um, it's a quite an interesting question. I think I have, I don't have a straight answer for this. The only thing I can tell you, uh, he's one of those very few men on earth that knows what's going to happen in the future. And I would like to ask him what he thinks is going to be. It's going to be fascinating to hear what he's going to say. What would you tell to those early Guys, like, I mean, what would you tell to those people who just want to start business, but they're afraid 
to start, afraid to make this shift. They may be some, have some hesitations to do it or not to do it, whether I should do it or I shouldn't do it. What would be your recommendation? You're not always going to be uh, kicked out of your work like me and then be able to do a business. So you really sometimes you have to do that move. If you want to if you want to have um, a more open horizon future, uh, a bigger opportunity, um, a wider scope of achievements, you have to go be, to go on your own. You cannot be within an, a corporate world. Um, so um, don't be afraid. Do it. What you're going to lose? That's the question you're going to ask. You're going to lose a few dollars. Uh, money, money you've already made, you're going to lose, but you're going to make more. You're going to learn. So um, go for it. You know, I would, um, don't stop. Nobody's waiting for you. You have to do it yourself. Uh, what type of person should I have to be in order to join your team and earn at least 20,000 dirhams per month? Um, you have to have the, uh, you have to share the same ethical values that we have as a company. And we have quite a few of them. Um, and that commitment. And the most important thing, you need to love food. Uh, you need to enjoy food. And you need to be ready to taste a lot of food. Um, which is a bit of a hard one if you're trying to keep a little bit on <laughs> diet. Um, and uh, you're somebody that wants to uh, be proud of what they are doing. And they want to leave a mark. That's when you are actually around 20 and above. All right, now we have a hot seat. It means that I will be asking very fast questions and Manar will be giving us fast answers, but not, uh, does, doesn't mean that it will be necessarily short. It can be expanded. So, Dubai or Damascus? Uh, Dubai. Why? The opportunity, the future, the possibility, the horizon. Who is the best businessman on the planet? Dubai. <laughs> Which is the best city in the UAE? It's a very tricky question. I, I live in Dubai. I came down here. I have a lot of admiration of Abu Dhabi. Uh, and each and every Emirates have its own characteristics. But this is home for me. What is the most unbelievable request you received from a client? Somebody wanted uh, keyboard-friendly salads. Wow. <laughs> so it doesn't drop a lot of food in between the keyboard. <laughs> what was your worst ever taken decision in business and in life? I went into some uh, uh, uncalculated adventures within the business that uh, really get me a little bit of a setback, but it's a learning experience. Uh, we, we wanted to do something that we actually invested in and it did not materialize in the way we wanted to be. So yeah, that's it. Maybe not thinking faster as well, that was a bad decision. And what about in life in general? Worst decision, I don't know if I made any bad decisions. Uh, I made a lot of good decisions actually, yeah. What is the happiest moment in life? For you. Or when my kids were born. What does happiness mean for you and what is unhappiness for you? Happiness is the... Besides seeing my family and my kids and an achievement on, on the safe side, because that's the most important thing. Um, I like to see that I am progressing in the right direction. And I think that's happiness. I think it's a set of achievements that I want to be whether and maybe this is in the direction of taking this company to go out of its curdle united arab emirates and expand to other places and unhappiness is not being able to control things but who can <laughs> who has been the biggest influence on you in life my aunt who raised me up yes. if you could meet anyone in the world's history who that man or woman shall be definitely definitely two guys they're not guys, they are, uh, I would like to meet Jesus and I would like to meet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are you a half empty guy or half full guy? Depending on the situation, but I am, uh, I'm much better than being half full. Imagine you met with God, what would you tell him? How can we make it better? All right guys, so now we're having the most interesting, the most 
favorite part of the video. We are having a free giveaway contest and the winner shall have one hour interview or talk or lunch here in 1762 with Monarch himself, with the owner, with the businessman, with the current entrepreneur, one of the best entrepreneurs in Dubai, who is managing 250 people and who can share his story and can give his advice over during the lunch time to you personally. So, the contest will be to write into the comment down, just go, go down, put like of course, put the ring bell and everything like that, you know, all this stuff. Just what you need to do, you need to write the item of the menu that could add value and maybe make 1762 even better in the menu and as a restaurant of Dubai in general. Write it in the comment below and Manar himself will, be will select my the winner. Yeah, he will select the winner and you will have a meeting, one hour meeting with him and a nice dinner here in this beautiful restaurant. This will be my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's do it. Yes, thank you, sir. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. This was the owner and the founder of 1762 and the appetite, Manar Al Jish. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really nice. Talk. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.